In this video, we're going to talk about chemical properties and experimental variables that can affect reaction rates. And our goal here is to be able to make predictions about whether reactions will speed up or slow down as, for example, experimental conditions change or we change the chemical properties or makeup of the reaction mixture. This slide introduces us to the idea that reaction rate depends on chemical identity of the reactants, their phase and what's called their morphology, as well as the temperature. So first and foremost, the intrinsic reactivity of reactants can vary. Calcium and sodium metal are both highly reactive with water, for example, and this is because calcium and sodium metal are highly oxidizable. They want, quote unquote, to give up electrons. This is intrinsic to their properties as metallic elements. But the phase and morphology of the reactants also matter. So for example, surface area can affect rate. The greater the surface area of a reactant exposed to another reactant, generally the faster the rate. This is particularly important for heterogeneous reactions where the reactants are in different phases and everything's not in one homogeneous solution. We can also think about the impact of phase, gases versus liquids versus solids. Particles in these phases of matter are moving at different speeds with gases generally moving faster than liquids, generally moving faster than solids. And intuitively, we can think about the impact on reaction rate by relating it to the speeds of these particles. The faster they're moving, the more often they're collide, they'll collide, maybe the faster the reaction rate. And of course, reaction rates are generally higher at hotter temperatures. We're familiar with this idea, for example, from cooking, where chemical reactions create flavor molecules. Heating up foods, heating up ingredients, leads to faster reactions and faster cooking of our foods, for example. The figure at the bottom of this slide shows you an example of the impact of morphology on reaction rate. On the left, we have iron powder in hydrochloric acid, aqueous hydrochloric acid. And on the right, we have an iron nail in the same solution. And you can see that the reaction appears much faster on the left than on the right, where the solution is a lot cloudier, we see a lot more bubbles and that kind of thing. And the origin of this is the difference in the surface area of iron exposed to the solution in powder versus on the nail surface. So in the powder, we have a very large surface area of iron exposed to the solution a lot more contact between the HCl and the Fe. On the right, on the nail surface, we have actually a lot less exposed surface area. And so the reaction is slower in that case as there's a lot less contact between the iron and HCl. Reaction rate also depends on the concentrations of reactants. And this is especially important in homogeneous reactions happening in solution. So for example, at a relatively low concentration of the reactants, collisions are less frequent. The molecules just bump into each other less often. And this generally leads to a slower reaction rate. At higher concentrations of the reactants, collisions become more frequent and the rate of the reaction increases as a result. Now the dependence here gets a little bit complicated and we're going to deepen our understanding of this when we introduce the concept of rate laws in a future video. But this intuition is important and relating back to collisions is important, particularly as we get into discussions of collision theory. Generally speaking, the more frequently molecules collide, the more likely they are to react in a given time frame. And so increasing concentration tends to be associated with higher rate. In some cases, the addition of a new chemical species can actually accelerate a reaction. And the most remarkable thing about this is that that species that's introduced is actually not consumed itself. This is what's known as a catalyst, a substance that accelerates a chemical reaction without being consumed itself and without actually appearing in the balanced chemical equation, either as a reactant or a product. It's most often written over the arrow to indicate that it's not consumed. So for example, the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide in the absence of any catalyst is relatively slow. And intuitively from everyday life, a bottle of hydrogen peroxide will last a while, which is kind of remarkable given that H2O2 is a pretty good oxidant. If we introduce sodium iodide into the mix, however, 
the reaction is much faster. And one of the remarkable things about this is it doesn't take a full two equivalents, say two moles of sodium iodide for every two moles of H2O2, to get this to happen. It actually takes much less than two equivalent. A few crumbs or a little fairy dust, as I like to call it, of sodium iodide will cause this reaction to go much, much faster. We'll talk a lot more about catalysis in section 12.7. So for the time being, I just want to introduce this as a factor that can influence chemical reaction rates. The introduction of a catalyst generally accelerates reactions. Now, how this actually happens mechanistically is going to be a subject for future discussions, but this is an important, a very important practical way to increase the rate of a chemical reaction.